Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This Thatter the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. I love Ben Riley. That's right, kids. It's time for another uh, clone soft. Well, another clone episode. This time, though, we're going to be starting with Kane. So, welcome back to the Ultimate Spider Cast. I am Phil. Joining me, Mister Signal of Doom himself. It is Dave. Hey, Phil. Good to see you, man. I feel like the ghost of Ray is in the room, but I noticed there is no Ray, so shout out to our compatriot Ray. Um, he's using the kids' excuse. Yes, is, yes, I mean, congratulations to them on, uh, yes, the birth of their second child, a daughter, but yes, Ray is using that as an excuse not to podcast with us. Yeah, time, so. I mean, uh, and you know what, I'll, I'll give him it because I understand with a young child it's very uh, difficult. Um, yeah. But we are feeling his loss, and I know we have a potential... Uh, co-host potentially may drop in if she does fantastic yes. you know for for everyone who knows yes it is it, it would be lilith who's here every other week so uh yeah she yes a cameo in this but if you know if, but if you know lilith at all it is uh it's it's a little after 8 30 on a sun, <laughs> sunday morning so we all we she all may know. lower herself to a, a scarlet spider with me <laughs> probably, oh no she wanted to, probably... she wanted to be here it's more about uh <laughs> How much did she drink last night or, you know. Yeah, that's fair enough, man. Is she still down in um, Mexico? Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's cool. Man, I wish I lived in Mexico. I imagine it's quite nice. Like, it's cold here in Sydney. It's cold and rainy tonight. Uh, We're at the end of the weekend. I don't normally look so half dead, folks. I'm going to fix the lighting in this room. It's my new apartment. So I look like I'm, I actually look like I'm a hobo. And I'm not. I own multiple properties. I have a I have a steady paying job, but I am extremely exhausted. So my apologies for the visual presentation. Um, but hey, it's all about personality. Yeah. And my personality sucks. So you know that's um, I've got a terrible uh-huh. personality. <laughs> no. <laughs> but but uh, I, no no I'm better than Kane. I will say that. Oh uh, uh, well, who isn't? I mean, Jesus Christ, this guy is a mood kill. Um, can I just say that right up front? Like, this guy just brings the party down 24-7. I thought it was going to be... Uh, look, I obviously don't listen to anything that you guys say because I opened up this comic, um, the Scarlet Spider thing, and I was like, oh, this will be the continuation of Ben Riley," And I opened it up, and I was so confused of which comic we were doing, and then I was like, it- it's Kane. Yeah. And I'm like, oh... And, but I clarify with you because I didn't. What yeah. I didn't want to do is what I've done on Signal, where I read the full thing and then find out on the show that I've done the wrong thing. And I'm like, no, I'm going to check with Phil because Phil knows what he's doing. Um, but you know, something I was surprised by hmm. that it was 2012 mm-hmm. and they hadn't done a Scarlet Spider thing since the 90s. Yeah, no. Right? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Like for for yeah. I don't know how many years after that original 90s stuff, they thought I'm, I don't know. They just thought. That people were just like sick of it, I guess, and like there had been such outcry to bring bring back the original Peter Parker and stuff. I, I don't know if it yeah, took no, time. So I, I, yeah, I assumed it would have been a lot closer to the date. That's why I checked because yeah. I was like, I, like, but then, uh, and who was the writer? Christopher Yost. Yes. Who I can say, I if I may be wrong here, but I believe he did a very cool X Force run. I think so, uh, yeah. In the early 2000s, that had a really distinctive art style, and I actually had the the hardcovers. I think I sold them at a, and I kind of regret it because it was actually a pretty cool X Force. It, it it ended, it ended, listeners, with Wolverine having sex with Domino, I believe, on a motorbike. I, I think I'm right in saying that. And what a way to finish the series. Oops. You know. <laughs> that was that was how the series ended, and I was like, well. You know, top marks. Fin- <laughs> I mean, you know. Finishing in more ways than one. Yeah, exactly. Finishing move. Um, and, and I think I'm right in saying it was Domino. I, I could be wrong, but I, I, I feel it was. Um, it was a character that you wouldn't normally pair. Yeah, with Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a... 
but it was a cool series. And so I know that this he's floated around the Spidey books a little bit, um, and I knew the name more than anything. Um, so it was interesting to get him on uh, Scarlet Spider. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think after that 90s clone stuff, people, I mean, people were complaining and Marvel was just like, don't mention clones, don't mention clones for how many sure. years and stuff. But I mean, now, I mean, we were discussing this just yesterday. I think it's been so long since the 90s and with some of the modern comics, people are like, well, maybe we didn't have it so bad in the 90s. 100%. Well, if you look at the state of Marvel now, uh, their comic line, and, and, and not every title, but just how poor mm-hmm. some of the top. Like we did Blade One on the show this week, and I actually said it's so bad that I may never read a Blade comic again. Oh, jeez, <laughs> it's so bad. And I like Blade, mm-hmm. like, you know. And, and it's the the writing is just basic. Like any, like seriously, anyone could pick up a pen and write it, but the art is just terrible. It's oh. just awful. Like it's just an awful issue. And I was so disappointed because I picked it because I really genuinely like Blade. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just picked I it was... up. I haven't read it yet, but yeah. Yeah, well, I hope you didn't pay full price, man. <laughs> I hope you subbed the high seas there, you know, because um, let me tell you, you're in for a bad experience. But but I've got a couple of things I want to cover before we enter Scarlet Spider. So yeah. I did a bit of research because I only only come on the show every now and then, so I like to give my you know money's worth. Um, I... I looked at the Marvel Legends reveals at San Diego Comic Con because mm-hmm. I'm a big Marvel Legends uh, collector. And let me tell you, the X Men '97 Legends figures: Wolverine, Storm, Rogue, Gambit, Magneto—they just look beautiful. Mm. Look, look absolutely beautiful. Like I, I think I'm going to collect the whole line. Um, and there was other stuff, but that was the there was some Spider Man stuff actually. There was uh, Spider Man animated series stuff. Um, Smythe. And Peter Parker in a two pack. Oh, um, yeah, I can't remember who else, but that was the main one. Um, there was a character I don't know who it was. She looks like Domino, but she's not Domino, and she's got a fan. So she's that black and white kind of like look. She's got a cut like a Japanese style fan. I, I don't know who. I oh, know is that Lady Bullseye? Is. Maybe. Uh. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that actually that might be Lady Bullseye. Yeah, okay. I just purchased, um, uh, I got it on sale, Mother Legend Sh- is Shrike, is that how you say them, or Shriek? Uh, is, is that, she's black and white? Yeah, Shriek, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool looking character. Yeah. Do, do you know anything about that character? Because I don't. I don't uh, yeah, she has like sonic power. She she was like, she would like hang out with Carnage back in the 90s. Like, uh, yeah, she was like kind of like Carnage's oh, girlfriend the in the 90s. In the movie? Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that might have been yeah. her, and and I will say this: excellent looking character. I just picked it up because it was on sale, and it just looked fantastic. And I was like, yeah, that, that's it. That's an automatic. Um, yeah, but um, you know, I just wanted to point out that the X Men Legends figures, and they come in. I, I'm an out of the box collector, yeah. but um, they come in like a, almost like a VHS style cardboard design. Mm-hmm. Um, they look really cool. Do you do you collect them? At all? Um, sometimes. I mean, it depends. Uh, sometimes we will get the Marvel Legends. I've been. I know I was getting. I've been getting a lot of Funkos and stuff lately. But uh, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, that's uh, a that's its own well, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I went from zero to now. I have uh, th- on the end there three uh, Spider Man twenty ninety nine Funkos. So uh, beautiful. Yeah. There's a there's a cool uh, Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Marvel Legends figure as well, actually, mm. that came out with the movie. Yeah. Um, I got um, Spider-Gwen the other day. I love that character, and I love the look of the character as well. Not, I, yeah. Character's cool, but I think the design of the character is one of the best designs that they've had for a while. Yeah. Um, so and that it, was my first point. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the second thing I wanted to discuss before we hop into Scarlet Spider was Punisher. I was going to ask you, I, wanted, I was going to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, look, I'm not... Uh, certainly, I, I look. I hate what they did to Frank Castle, but I, I am willing to give a new Punisher a chance. Of course, I, so I don't feel particularly strongly. Other, other than I just want to like. So I don't have any. I, I, I think not having Frank Castle is just bullshit anyway. But I get it. Okay, they moved him off the board, but I don't understand why you know, they would just bring in one straight away. If it really was that Punisher was too controversial to handle or whatever, and like we're so worried about like whatever we're worried about why would you then the next month just bring your punisher again like what's the difference 
I th- I think it's just for the gimmick. You know, they think yeah. they're gonna they're gonna sell more issues. Say, hey, look, it's a new Punisher. Well, they'll sell the number one. Will sell, but oh, after yeah. that, I, it'll just die. I mean, now I, I had um one of my favorite listeners um on my own show, Michael Kellisham. He he just said because he predicted that it might be the Black Nick Fury, which I actually said would be cool. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, I I said that would be cool. Um, but he said this one's far too white for him. He said he at least hopes he's gay. And actually, I said, I, I in all honesty, I, I actually think if they did that, that would be cool because it's something different at least. Because right now it's just like another X Shield guys Punisher. I mean, it's yeah, it's just very. It's like replacing the the better version with just a watered down, very similar version, and that never works. Mm-hmm. You've got to go at least a bit different, you know. Like, if you said to me the Punisher was going to be a mutant, at least it's a gimmick, but at least it's a gimmick with some difference. Yeah. You know? Something like that. I'm just putting ideas out there. and the, I, I just feel that they're replacing one Punisher with just a watered-down version of the same sort of thing. And I and I just feel like Punisher... Look, and this is the other thing. I said this to that coward, Tom Brevoort, and his fat clone, C.B. Sabowski. I said this to them on Twitter. I said... You guys have just burnt the Punisher audience. So who do you think's going to actually support this character? Like you actively hate the Punisher audience. So who do you think's going to turn up and support this character? Like uh, well, all these mystery fans that are just waiting, you know, waiting at the gate for like a new Punisher. Like they're not there. Or I don't know. You, do, you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like, yeah. I yeah. mean, again, like I said, I think it's more gimmicky than anything else. I'm like, what? They could even do like a time travel thing. Why not bring in uh, Punisher 2099 or something? You know, That'd be cool. Jack Gallows. Yeah. yeah. I mean, unless they were Dude, just like, yeah. oh, he looks too much like Frank Castle or something. I don't know. He does look a lot like Frank Castle. Yeah. But but at the end of the day, the Punisher's the Punisher. Like I didn't think that when Punisher got the war armor, I thought that was a pretty cool gimmick. Mm-hmm. You know when he got the war machine armor? Oh, I, yeah. I actually felt that was actually a pretty cool idea. The one I hated was Frankencastle. I yeah. hated that one. But Punisher with the war machine, I was like, that's something different. That was probably one of my more favorite Punisher runs in sort of the last sort of 20 years since Garth Ennis. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Honestly, I, like, like I would say, I, I just feel like the, uh, the uh, weakness of the character is just they can never have him be too successful. Like you can have him gunning down nobodies that we've never heard of before, but it's like he's not. They're not going to let him kill the kingpin. They're not going to let him kill some like uh, a list supervillain. So it's like you can only have Frank Castle be so successful. But but I that's what I'm saying. Like I think at his best, yeah. Over the years, it's him going after the mob and yeah. drug drug uh, you know kingpins and you know what I mean like drug yeah. uh, networks. It's like it, I, I think the weaker moments are when he's interacting too heavily with the superhero universe yeah I, I think yeah that that is what they should do with him is kind of keep him almost separate most of the time yeah and they've done it very successfully mm-hmm. like over the years like they've, they've had moments of great success oh in the 90s he had what three monthly books yeah and, and then uh, uh, yeah that's the best era but yeah. look at garth ennis's run i mean that was a long run mm-hmm. and that was pretty dark and pretty bleak you yeah know, you know his max run and went for a long time and i'm just saying like I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll support it in that I'll, I'll read it and review it for Signal, and yeah. I'm, I'm on the fence. Like, and they put Frank Castle off in the fantasy land, which was just fucking bullshit. You know, I would have preferred if they'd done Frank uh, had moved, sort of retired. Obviously, we can bring him out of retirement, but literally retired to a villa in Spain, and was just kind of like, "I'm done. The war is over." Mm. And, and of course, you can bring him back. You yeah. Know? But like, you give him that moment. Uh, this whole with taking to fantasy land, I'm like that sucks. Hmm. You know, yeah, that's my view. Oh, I was, th- you know what? I was thinking the one day, Dave. I'm like, if I had the time and like time zones allowed it and stuff, I'd be like, if I had room for another podcast, I'd be like, I'd be asking this Dave Finn to do a Punisher podcast with me. Oh, I'd do it, man. I'd do it in a heartbeat. I'm sure you would. I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> like. Like, one thing, I, I will say this, one thing I love about jumping onto your show, and I jump onto a G.I. GI um, Joe show as well, is I love just jumping on and, you know, doing these these, these things here. They don't take up too much of my time, mm-hmm. and it, it's fun, because, you know, on my own show, we cover it all, um, but, you know, there's only so much time you can cover. When you specify on something, 
mm-hmm. when you when you when you dial into something one topic it really i i think is cool um so yeah it's a lot of fun so basically i'm saying if you want to do it i'm always available you just need to call that bat phone any time of day i mean michelle will be asleep beside me i'll hear that phone go i, I go i'm out of here phil's calling we're talking punisher <laughs> i i don't even and the beautiful thing is i don't even need to research it i've read most of it you know what i mean like what i haven't read of punisher is probably a slim volume uh, yeah. you know i've read it all and um i and i do gradients of it you know because it does ebb and flow over yeah. the years like and sometimes some runs that you thought at the time were average in retrospect look so much better because yeah, oh of yeah. what other stuff they do like it's weird like I, I yeah I, I think hopefully hopefully this is a gimmick and then within a year or two Frank will be back anyway that's what I hope yeah you know? probably yeah but yeah if I ever have a hole in the schedule I'm gonna be like I'm calling this day Finn and we're doing some punish <laughs> yeah but you do about 17 shows so I know, know. Jesus Christ. What's your most popular, if you have a, like, not popular, but, like, <sighs> is there a main one? Um, well, I know, we, I, we don't even do it weekly anymore, but me, Lilith, and Charlie were doing, like, you know, Capes and Lunatics. You know, for a while, we were just reviewing, you know, the one, the weekly comics and stuff. Yes, and talking any news flagship. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm basically on there if I have any interviews or anything or mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's cool. You have such a love. And pour one out, by the way. Still thinking of your friend who passed away. We're very sorry to hear. Yeah. Go. I mentioned him on the show often, man, because, like, I mean, that, you know, I imagine that's a loss that's hard to fill kind of thing, you know? Oh, yeah. And there's, like, like I always, like, keep seeing stuff that remind me of him. Like, uh, did you see the, um, I said they're doing a one shot for uh, Superior Spider Man in October? I'm like, he loved Superior Spider Man. He loved, like, yeah. Dr. Octopus stuff. I'm like, he would have been all down for this. And yeah. Well, dude, that was one of the. I, I actually think that's one of the be- best moments of Dan Slott's run. Oh, yeah, that, that's probably one of my favorite stuff of Dan Slott, because he's like, hit or miss with me. Yeah. I, I actually felt it could have um, longer than it, gone longer than it went. Yeah. I, I really, yeah. really enjoyed it. Like, um, a, a, compl- a complex character anyway, Doc Ock, mm-hmm. and that storyline I felt utilized him really well. You know? Oh, yeah. But, yeah, you're right. That's the thing. When, when someone passes away... If, and especially with media, like you guys have done so many interviews, and I can only imagine not interviews, you know, shows. Mm-hmm. Um, it must pop up on your feed and stuff a lot. Oh yeah, which in a way is great. Oh yeah, another way is sad for you, I'm sure. You know? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, uh, oh, but speaking of interviews, Lilf and I did. Uh, we got the first interview with DG Chichester last night because uh, I don't know if you saw they announced that. Uh, San Diego this weekend. Uh, starting in November, he's doing a mini series, a Daredevil mini series set in the nineties. Oh, cool! Like with that, uh, with that armor that uh, they, you know, him and. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Well, that's cool because I know that. Um, that's cool. Yeah. Because I, I think that their throwback uh, mini series have been really strong that they've done. They might. Yeah. I'm thinking they must be because they keep going back to that well for you know those. Well, There's dude, it's because series. there's a lot of people with cash in their pockets who 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 read the comics oh, yeah. and are still, you know, yeah. But what a cool um, period to to go back into, like the armor. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, man, that's I'd read that for sure. I really enjoyed um, James DiMatteis's Spider-Man stuff, and mm-hmm. I think Larry Hammer did a really cool Wolverine one, which oh, I yeah. enjoyed. Um, they're fun, man. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh yeah, yeah oh yeah. They already had uh, Di Matteis do like two of those miniseries set during like the clone stuff. Yeah, I lo- I loved them. I thought that was I thought that were very cool. I want to get him on the show again soon because he's just got so much product coming out. That he's just pumping oh, I out. know, I know. Jesus Christ, he, he, they must. Um, well, I guess you know, just what? Why not churn and burn through the scripts, get the artists on it, and just keep going? Yeah, like, why not? And then I didn't watch it yet, but I guess uh, Di Matteis is on some uh, on. Uh, they just put out a uh, DC Comics uh, documentary, and he's in it. So, super powered, I believe it's. Yeah, like, I, I actually only know of it because I saw it on his Facebook, um, and it's on Max. Yes, uh, I've actually got it listed to watch. It's three hours. Is it oh, okay? That's all. Yeah, that's. I told I Rich. I, I told this on the show. I was very excited because I was like, because I, I, you know, I'm like, I, I, I'll watch one of those. Yeah. I told Rich, Rich is like, I've seen so many of these documentaries, I don't need to see another one. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, we haven't all sat down and watched all the documentaries in history. Like, like I'm sure some of it will be stuff that we've all heard before. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like, like I almost, this is, might sound like sacrilege, especially coming from me. 
I almost don't want too much of it to be Superman and Batman. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I feel, not that I'm saying, obviously they're going to be like a solid hour of them, just, but I feel that if you've got three hours with DC, I'd actually love them to cover yeah. you know, more than just Superman and Batman, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, they should, yeah. They, yeah. you know, yeah. some of the people... Although so I know some of you love Batman, but yeah, I mean, every I other the other characters need some love here too. Batman, yeah. I mean, it, it, my if, favorite if it was up character. To me, it'd probably be a three-hour Batman. <laughs> I feel the ghost of Ray. Batman, yeah, Ray's, Ray's my favorite Ray's, character. He's just crying in a room right now. <laughs> Into the dark night, all to do with Batman. So I've actually got. Um, the, so this Skull and Spider thing, so it spins out of Spider Island, right? yeah? Yeah, I mean, long story short, I mean, basically, the queen, like, the big villain of it was, like, turning people into giant spiders, so Peter had to come up with this, like, cure for it, and then him and Kane were kind of, like, wrestling around, and Kane, like, falls into the big vat of this cure, and that's what cures his clone degeneration and all his scars and stuff, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, because I, I remember reading it, like, but literally, like, it feels like 15 years ago. Yeah, like me that. too, yeah, it's been a while since I read it too, yeah. But, and then, yeah, Kane just grabbed one, a, a Spider-Man suit that Peter was working on and just, like, left town, so, yeah. He just stole one of the suits, he mm -hmm. didn't even design it himself. Yeah, no. Um, and I will say this, uh, first first page, you know, first few pages, uh, who was doing the art? Is it Ryan Stegman? On uh, I I yeah, it, it is Stegman, yeah. Yeah, it's, I really liked the art at the start um and the setup and it's so funny because i was expecting this to be um ben riley mm -hmm. and then when it jumped down i was like oh has ben riley got like um long hair now and then i realized who it was and i was like oh this is kane mm -hmm. um who i am much more familiar with now because we've done all the um you know the yeah the 90 stuff and i was like he doesn't look weird like normal um does he still have some slight scarring? Like, there's still something on his face? I or, mean... Or is that a mask? I don't know if that's a little bit of something, or if it's just the artist, but, uh... But, yeah, well, no, most of his scars are supposedly cured, you know, or by... Oh, you know, you know what it is? Sorry, no, it's... It's it's the beard, and the, yeah. the way they've done the artwork, it, it doesn't look fantastic, actually. It's that overly kind of rendered artwork, but mm -hmm. it's just his beard. Yeah, okay, yeah, right. Um, I liked the start of it uh, a lot. I did question why he wasn't killing right at the beginning. And the cynical part of me is, is that's just because it's to cleanse the character for, for sort of consumption for the audience. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, seriously, I fucking hate that Marvel, uh, you know, it's like, oh, we'll let them be vigilantes, you know, and we'll let them just kick everyone's asses. Oh, but he won't kill. He'll cripple, but he won't kill. And it's like... I, I, there's a part of me that just thinks, I know these things are supposedly for kids, but honestly, yeah. how, many, how many children on the age of 10 are rushing out to buy this? I mean, you know? yeah, I know. I th well, At least they try to give you, like, an in-story reason, because it's like, you know, because I guess they were saying, like, he, he was kind of mentally unbalanced, you know, when the, he was the, had the clone degeneration and stuff, so it's... He was like, nuts! He I, was yeah, nuts. they're saying that's why he was killing, but so... And again, he's a clone of Peter Parker, so, you know, you had Uncle Ben yelling at him in his head and stuff, so, it's, so uh. they kind of try to explain at least they tried to explain it away instead of just like changing him for no reason. But yeah, and then the the um scene. Yeah, there's a lot I did like in this issue. There's a lot I like. Yeah. So I like that um he actually just wants to get out of it. So really, his instinct isn't to yeah. mirror Peter Parker. He actually wants to leave. I like that he booked the hotel room. He's enjoying himself. Oh, that, oh yeah, that's funny because yeah, because yeah, he, he steals all that drug money from the drug dealers and gets like a two thousand dollar a night uh, uh, penthouse. Uh, you know, the best room in the hotel. Yeah, why not? And 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 he's enjoying himself, and he's looking in the mirror, and he's still seeing um, the cane. And there's a nice picture here of um, Ben Riley Spider Man in the hoodie. Oh yeah. Um. And Peter Parker, and by the way, I just picked up the um, Ben Riley in the hoodie Legends figure as well. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it's a nice one. Um, I think I saw. I don't know if it's out yet, but uh, when we were in GameStop, I saw. I think it might be coming soon. They might have uh, Ben Riley in his Spider-Man suit coming soon. Oh, they do. No, they do. It's yeah. uh, coming very soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like the hoodie one. Yeah, uh, the hoodie I, one is good. I, yeah, I like the hoodie one. I'm going to put it with my Spider Gwen. But anyway, I liked it. Um, here's a question I had. 
So he shaves off um, the hair, mm-hmm. and he's got like the what I th- like. This is just my opinion. I think that that haircut that um, it's kind of the it's kind of a buzz cut, really. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know why anyone who's not in the military would have that haircut. Just my opinion, but um, I don't know. Again, anyone, again, if he just does yeah. that, so he doesn't look at as much like Peter Parker, maybe. Um, but here's my question: Does he try to commit suicide? Like, because it seems like reading this, it seems like he's surprised. He goes, "I can think clearly, see clearly, feel." My God, webs. And I'm like, did he, like, I'm just kind of like, did he not know that the webs were going to come out or, or or was that just really unclear storytelling? Like, mo- was he actually trying to kill himself then? I'm trying to remember because did he, didn't, did he have webs in Spider Island or no? Um, he, he had webs. I'm sure he had webs in the opening scene. Mm. He had webs, I'm sure. So why would it be a surprise when he jumps out of a building the night, the day after, because he got the money from the drug bust. Yeah. So why would he uh, be? It, it, but when you read that, when you read that pan, those panels, it it reads to me like actually he was surprised he had webs. Well, if he was surprised, is that mean he was trying to kill himself? Um, I didn't think again, like you said, and maybe it's just unclear storytelling. I think it. I don't know if it's all more supposed to be like he has new instincts now, so it's like. Uh, but he's jumping out of a skyscraper, Phil. So I know, I know. <laughs> and like I, if you jumped yeah. out of a skyscraper, Phil, I'd be concerned for your safety. Yeah, I know, and I and I think and I think you know he even thinks to himself, he's like, oh, now I see why Spider Man enjoys this, or, you know, and stuff. I think it was more along the lines of the, you know, just. It was just kind of like the. Have you ever thought this? And mm. and and like I love Spider Man. Like he's he's probably my number two, you know, hero of all time. Like I love him, you know. And have you ever thought sometimes? Same with Batman. Jesus Christ, these guys are lucky with how they cast their webs and grappling hooks. Yes. Like I like the nonchalant way they'll throw themselves off buildings and then just cast a web out. I'm just like the law of average is going to catch up with you if you're doing that. I mean, at least with the webbing, it'll like stick to stuff. I mean, yeah, Batman yeah. and grappling hooks and stuff. Yeah, that's kind of it's like really, but yeah, I don't, again, at least the webbing like so stick. The, to... the webbing, I agree. The webbing is more. Um, it is. It is definitely quote unquote safer, but it's it's just the the way they'll do it. Mm-hmm. And um, but, but I agree with Spider Man. I give him a pass completely. Batman, I think sometimes. And this goes for the whole Bat family. Nightwing does the same thing. I just sometimes think you guys are borderline suicidal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you, you are. Like the the way you just throw yourself off a building and then just punch out a grappling hook just in the hope that it's going to catch on to something. At least with, as you say, with the webbing, it sticks and he can. It, you know, it makes sense. Like it's cool. So is is his webbing organic? Is Kane's webbing organic? Yeah, they did. They did give him the organic webbing because it's a weird thing. Cause it's like I don't know. There's like a spider totem thing where it's like at first they had they gave it to Peter like in the early 2000s just because they for a while they gave Peter organic webbing. I guess just because Tobey Maguire had organic oh, webbing they? around I didn't that know time. They did that I because they because did that to- the Tobey Maguire movies were out so. Yeah. Yeah, but and then at this era they kind of shifted that whole thing to Kane. So yeah, so now Kane's got the organic webbing and oh, I see. As we'll see okay. later in the series, he get he has like little like well he has like these like claw things. It's just like it almost looks like a spear coming out of like each wrist or and stuff. So oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I wasn't familiar with the villain. Is that a villain who's created for this um story? Yeah, that's a brand new villain, yeah. Yeah. Um I am going to say this, not one of the more memorable villains of all time. And and how about, we've got to, we've got to mention this. The old lady's crossing the road. Okay? Yeah. And uh, the first, pa- when he just goes down and destroys that, that sort of like um, truck. Oh, yeah, he just crushes the front of I, it, yeah. I was like, did he just kill that guy? Like, yeah, when he, like on the page, the way, it, I mean, the art is beautiful. Mm-hmm. But you can actually see, and I'm just noticing now, that the guy is ejecting out of it with these legs. Yeah. I didn't see that at first. I thought he just crushed the guy. And then it goes to the guy, and he's got, like, all these claws. Like, he's fully massacred. Like, he's hammered. Yeah, the guy went flying through the windshield. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I will say this. Uh, sometimes I'm critical of, of Marvel and of their decisions in their comics. I actually felt 
that was actually I know I'm critical of some of the decisions in this comic, but I thought that was really cool mm-hmm. that they did that because to see to me that tells me that this Kane guy is a real loose cannon. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he, it's I was kind of like okay, cool. Like this is actually really cool. Like so yeah, that was intense. Um, and, and then we see the first glimpse of the spider uniform and Jesus Christ, I'm such a fucking hopeless consumer. I wouldn't mind grabbing that as a legends. You know I, I mean? think they do have, they might have that figure. I, th- I, th- I think well, I'm do. a sucker for Spider-Man outfits. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was going to say, you like that outfit? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I do because it's, it's just a bit novel, you know, like, mm-hmm. um, I, you know, I'll tell you one of the worst outfits I've seen. Have you seen this Spider Boy outfit? Oh God, don't even get me started on Jesus Spider Boy. Yeah. Oh, people were up in arms about Spider Boy because uh, you know Dan Slott's already saying, "Oh yeah, that's going to be an uh, ongoing series. Spider Boy's getting one," and everyone's like, "How is this brand new character? You haven't even like revealed his yeah. origin yet, and you're like, in the, yeah. he's getting an ongoing, and like there's so many characters. You know, it's like Ben Riley can't get even like a mini series yeah. at this point. We're effing with Ben Riley, but you're gonna give Spider Boy an ongoing, and it looks shit. So, yeah, because like in comics uh, and as a consumer, and this is proved by say when you go down to look at action figures, and, uh, and I grabbed an action mm-hmm. figure I don't even know anything about because I like the look. Yeah. It's the same thing with comics. Um, people some t- sometimes in comics because a visual medium, people will will pick up a book be- be- to give it a try because yeah. they like the look of the character. The, the The design on that Spider Boy is damn awful. Well, like, well, I think Lilith and I cracked the code. You know what it is. I mean, he's wearing the tennis shoes and all that, and it's like mm. you know what they're doing. You know, uh, you know they got to share Miles Morales with Sony, so I think Marvel's creating their own uh, young Spider person that they don't have to share with Sony. So yeah, like a little Spider baby. But yeah. they've already got Spider Gwen. Yeah, but she's kind of Sony now too because of that movie. And okay, so uh, right, so Sony don't. So I guess if if Marvel create new Spider Man content, Sony don't own that. I don't think, yeah, no, I think, yeah, they have to, I think right. they have to make a deal for every, you know, every, each time, so. Yeah, okay, right, be, yeah, because they clearly, um, their, their fingerprints are all over, um, yeah, that's interesting, that's a, that's an interesting one, yeah, because it wouldn't make much, I, I know Sony owned the Spider-Man characters, but it's probably a list, and if you create oh, yeah. a Spider-Boy, it's, it's not included, and if they wanted to use Spider-Boy, not that they ever fucking need to, in a movie, yeah, okay, yeah. I understand. But who cares? Like, the business reasons aside, it still looks shit. Well, make it look better. If yeah. you want people to buy it, yeah. make it look better then, if, if that's your big play. Um, anyway, so, I, but here's something I'm critical of. So I like the, the, I also like the way that that suit is teased with the two red eyes and yeah. the black background. I think it looks really cool. Um, what I thought was really terrible was the end of the issue when this guy invades the hospital the artwork is just so it's just so lacking in character that I was actually like where is this guy and and I I know he's in the hospital but if you look at that artwork it's really hard to tell uh, like you mean it like doesn't flow like the last page where he's just standing the in front two, of the last flames so you, and you stuff see, yeah you, you see the hospital the, the the you know nurses are talking to the um everything's going to be all right and then the guy explodes in I just don't like that style of artwork where there's no background and there's the character and he's a very unmemorable character. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was a really poor ending to the what was a decent comic. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like the design of this villain. Yeah, he's basically he just looks like a guy, like a guy with tattoos and stuff, and it just uh, he has like the glowing eyes. But yeah, he he really just looks like a regular guy for the most part. And he's yeah, it's just. I don't know, like, he just seemed like a very basic villain. But i tell you something that really, really, really annoyed me. So, I've got the volume, I don't know if you've got the letters page. Um, I've got the letters page. Yeah, it, they have it on the app, so yeah. It's... Okay, yeah, okay. So, okay, so, the, of course there's the usual shit, where there are, you know, we, we, we've always wanted to, I've always been obsessed with Kane. I've been like, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know why, because he was just a psychotic clone, basically, in the original series, you know? Yeah. Anyway, and then they go, um, I found out from Marvel's main man in marketing, David Gabriel, that one of the characters we always heard retailers and fans clamor for was Spil- Scarlet Spider. Blah, blah, blah. 
And then it's like, yeah, they want Scarlet Spider. Who is Ben Riley? Yeah? Yeah. And it goes, and while Kane wasn't originally the Scarlet Spider in those old comics, and it's like, yeah, no shit he wasn't. They're clamoring for Ben Riley, and you're like, oh, well, let's slap together Kane and call him Scarlet Spider. Isn't that close enough, kids? No. You're like, I'm like, your marketing guy and you don't understand marketing. Mm-hmm. You, you don't understand, like, the product. And you even then say, they make a comment like it's not the, it's not the character name, it's the character inside. Well, then you're making your own point invalid because the character inside the Scarlet Spider suit, Ben Riley, was who they were apparently clamouring for and you gave them something else entirely and it's like you're not sort of... You're hearing what they want and you're going, oh, that's nice, that's nice, and then going, here's something different and we'll call it Scarlet Spider... Is that close enough, kids? It's like, I don't know why you just didn't bring back the fucking original. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't at this point. I mean, it'd be another four years after this before they got, Ben Riley got his own book. And it's, they, they've like never respected him. You know, after they killed him off in the 90s, it, they waited so long to do anything with the clone stuff. And then, yeah, then we had to sit through Kane for a while. And then they bring back Ben Riley. And then it's, and the, but they always like kind of like, mess with them it's like they kind of make him a villain half the time again the whole chasm yeah. stuff right now it's like he's locked away and he's like nuts and it's just like why yeah it's a shame um and i think it's just a shame and actually i will pay them a small amount of credit even though i hate that they have brought back ben riley and made him a villain i think it's shit mm-hmm. i will say the design of the character is actually pretty cool mm. yeah I, I i i like visually I'm just saying it's okay. What they actually have done, yeah. terrible. Like I'm not, I'm not signing off on it. But I'm, but I'm always a believer in in comics. If you're going to introduce a new character, yeah. you've got to make him visually or him or her visually interesting. You know what? If you like that, if you like that style, uh, Dave, I think they're, I think they are coming out with a figure of him as Chasm too. So, oh no, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I've, I've said. It. I'm not buying it. I, I'm, oh, okay. Because I'm, I'm, I'm like, fuck them. I'm not buying it. Um, <laughs> Like, I'm just saying, but at least it looks cool. Ray yeah. and I've had this conversation. We're both like, just like, it's just terrible. What no, I'm not buying fucking Tasm to sit beside my normal Ben Riley. No. Um, if you did a zombie version mm. of Ben Riley, I'd buy that. I'm a big sucker for zombie variants. Yeah. Um, I just, I just purchased it. I'm not a Scarlet Witch fan by any means, but there's a really cool zombie Scarlet Witch Marvel Legends figure. I'm trying to remember. I think they might have a, a few years ago, they might have put out a version of, uh, remember the story where uh, Ben gets the Carnage uh, symbiote from the 90s? They might have him as Carnage. Uh, they might. See, I think they might have cool. came out with that figure. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. But, but overall for a first issue, uh, it's decent. I think. Yeah. I think it's a decent reintroduction of Kane. Like, I, I, I think it's done relatively well. Like, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I, I think it's pretty pretty decent. And um, and in fairness, I like probably the second issue more than the first. But only slightly. Like, yeah. it's like a 7.3 or 4. But I, uh, I did think relaunching a character like Kane, although I will say this, the original Kane looked pretty cool mm-hmm. as well. Like, um, but I do really like that that suit. Uh, and, and, and fairness, I haven't seen him in anything, so I don't know how long this lasted or anything. So this was my first experience of reading Kane as Scarlet Spider with this suit. But I do think that whoever created the suit, it's not bad. I mean, I if I collected a whole stack of Spider-Man figures, and believe me, I do, um, I'd happily purchase this. Mm-hmm. You know, just to have on the shelf, like a Spider-Man family. I'm creating a Spider-Man family of Marvel Legends characters. And, um, there's going to be some house guests because there's also an X-Men family, but some of the house guests are like some of the Wolverines and, mm. Wolverines and stuff. I, I tell you, actually, there's a character, you know all these things. It's a Spider-Man character. <laughs> I keep thinking it's the Green Goblin Marvel Legends figure, but it's not. It's called like Sleepwalker or something or Sleep Dreamer or something. like. Oh, I mean, there was a, a character in the 90s, Sleepwalker. I mean, he were That's it. Yeah, it really wasn't a Spider-Man character, but yeah. I'm... Oh, okay. Because it's because I can't tell you how many times I've been in the store. I'm like, oh, there's Green Goblin. I've been looking for Green Goblin. I pick it up because there's a similarity. On, yeah. You know, you know, and then it's like Sleepwalker, and I'm like, I don't know who this is. I hmm. just put it back. I'm just like, fuck, they got me again. You know, um, 
but yeah, it's funny. It's 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 funny with some of the designs. But I mean, I'm looking at issue two here. What would you give issue one out of ten? Um, you're probably close to that seven. I'd say it's yeah, it's probably somewhere between a seven and a seven and a half. Uh, yeah, that's decent. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's uh, so I'm looking. I really like the start of issue two where it's got the um storyline with um. What's the guy's name? It's not the vulture. What's what's the guy called? Jackal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like the jackal. Uh, he's going now. Stop running, so I can shoot you. I, I like that flashback scene. I really like the artwork. Actually, mm-hmm. I think it looks really good. Um, this Ryan Stegman's done a lot of Spider Man or something, hasn't he? I feel like I've, re- I've I've seen a lot of his art. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of his artwork over the years. Um, yeah, like it, it's it's basically a fight scene, but it's cool. And then you see the full page reveal of the costume. Um, this may take more than five minutes, mm-hmm. and you know it's 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 cool. I really like it when he starts to choke out um, the guy with his webbing. Like, that's oh yeah, cool. and, uh, you know, like, yeah. And then even after they like, like dive out the window and they're like down in that park or whatever. Like, yeah. So like this is some. This is why I like Scarlet Spider. Or any of them where it's like you can do stuff that Spider Man's not going to do because I mean Kane picks up the cop's gun and it's like shooting at the guy. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, this is cool. Like to be honest, I I was like, yeah. But the second by the second issue, I because I had my reservations with the first issue. Mm-hmm. But when I saw him try to choke the guy out, then shoot him, then wrap him in the um, and it was cool how the guy actually broke out of the webbing, mm-hmm. and um, and then he just totally webs him up, and and then the people are clapping, and he's really um, like the character, he's quite damaged. So oh, that yeah. when you know when people are clapping him, he doesn't actually even realize at first like that's what they're doing well again i mean yeah because it's the whole thing you know but he was the first peter parker clone like you know miles warren created him the jackal created him and you know like not too long after he creates him he sees that he's got you know the scars are starting and jackal's like you're useless to me he's like Mm. get out of here i'll kill you and stuff so so basically he's been like a uh deformed monster his whole life and now so all of a sudden you know he's got a He's got a decent looking face and, you know, people are actually happy to see him. He's just like, yeah, this mm. is, I've never had this before. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, like. Oh, yeah, that, and, but that, but that scene, yeah, where the guy breaks out of the webbing and he's like, ah, killing Spider-Man was easy. And then, yeah, Kane just <laughs> beats him down. It's like, oh, I am not Spider-Man. Yeah, no, it's, it's wicked. And, and then, um, I, I, I've always liked a kind of reluctant hero mm-hmm. and he's very much that. And, um, and then at the end, he's like, I'm not Spider-Man, I'm not a hero, but maybe I don't have to be a monster. Maybe I can make up for all the things I've done. Maybe I can stop running and have a life for the first time. Mm-hmm. And, and if not, well, Mexico's right next door. He can he can live with Lula. Imagine he could be a yeah. roommate. Yeah, <laughs> yes, cause, yeah, because he is in Houston, Texas, which is uh, on the uh, southern border, yeah, with, with uh, Mexico. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, and also, I will say, it's cool to get him outside new york and stuff like in houston like you don't yeah. exactly hear a lot of houston dc superheroes that i can name off the top of that no. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. superhero sorry um yeah like and they make that point they even say this is in new york like the, the mayor would probably give you the keys to the city um yeah like i i by this by the end of the second issue i was kind of like yeah no I, i'm feeling this and um I'd probably give the second issue like a 7.3 or 7.5. Mm-hmm. I, I, I slightly preferred it to the first issue. And partly that's because I feel I've got my, you know, I've got my sea legs. I know what, I know what direction we're heading in. I was quite surprised that it was Kane. Um, yeah. Even though I think you guys said that, I just wasn't listening. Um, yeah, two very sort of tight issues. How many issues did this thing run? Uh, I mean, we'll do them all, but yeah, 25. Okay. So yeah. Decent run. Yeah, oh yeah. Decent run. Okay, well that's cool. Um, yeah, but, but Gee, I'd love to know what Ray would think. Yeah, would Ray, I know. Does Ray love this character or not? I don't um, know. I think he does. I oh. mean, Ray, you should have sent in feedback. Come on, yeah, come on, Ray. Oh, come on, like, Ray. You know, come on, Ray. Do you not have access to the internet? Uh, I've been chatting to him today, but I, I forgot really to question him about this. But I do know that I think he. I, I, pretty confident that he likes his character a fair bit. Yeah, I mean, hopefully he'll be back next time and he can tell us. So. Does he start doing the Mark of Cain again at some point? Surely? Um, I don't 
I don't know if he can. I'm trying to remember if he does it or not. I, 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 I don't was know. a big fan of that that he used to. Yeah, use I, I don't know if he can still do that because that was part of the degeneration. It was, ba- you know, the thing that lets him stick the walls. I know, but so I thought kind of, they yeah. might degenerate him in the in the course of the series. Oh, you know I can't. I, mean? I, yeah, I can't remember. It's been a while since I read this, so yeah, we'll have to okay. find out. But I don't. Uh, I don't remember him doing it, but. Okay. But no, this, the, these, these two issues were good, but like you were saying, like, I think like issue one was like a lot of setup and stuff. Like, I'm surprised they could have just did like an oversized issue and did like what we got in one and two is the first issue. Yep. Yeah. And then you would have got the full yeah. reveal of the costume in the first issue. Exactly. You know, or, although I will say I did like the, the way they teased it in the bag. Yeah. You know? it, man. As I said, I've read a little bit of this guy's stuff before, and it impressed me um, mm-hmm. without being like so memorable. But it was good, you know. Um, and I have definitely seen Ryan Stegman's art. I, I'm sure he's done like a lot of Spider-Man because I feel like I've seen a lot of his artwork over the years. Um, and I think together, uh, I mean, I'd give issue two seven point five, the first one a seven, a, a character that's not a favorite of mine. And yeah, I'm sort of turned the corner a bit on him. I'm like, yeah, no, he's pretty cool. And as you say, it's good to see a Spider-Man-esque character who's not Peter Parker, who they have a lot more leeway with because the stakes are so much lower, you know? Oh, yeah. that's a, I mean, again, I like that they moved them out of New York. That's why I keep screaming that we can do this with Ben Riley. you know? It's like moving to a different 100%. city. And, uh, you know, that's what I said, bring Peter Parker's Wonder. marriage back because you want a single Spider-Man. You could... You could literally have both sides of the coin. You could have a married Spider-Man, and you could have the guy who looks exactly like him, has the same powers as him, being the single guy. You could. They could do. They could. could but, they could have their but, cake and eat it too. That, man. Yeah. They're so scared of that. Like, I think that. But you could literally hey, have both. Honestly, yeah, honestly, they're so funny, aren't they? Because I think that really Disney kind of driving the bus, and then the Marvel Ed. Like, I don't trust Brevard and Sabowski as far as I could throw them. They don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know. And I think that they, they're they so at the whim of what they're hearing retailers say and what Disney corporate are telling them to do, and they're just so scared. They're running in circles, you know. Um, I, 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 don't, I honestly don't think they've got... Forget about a five-year plan. I don't think they've got a five-month plan, really. I honestly don't. I, think, I honestly think the sooner that those two clowns were removed from Marvel, the better. I would always prefer a suit upstairs mm-hmm. who doesn't barely know who the characters are. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. then it's almost like Sabowski and Brevoort are too attached, and they feel like they know it all, and they're and they're so you know apparently like with that Punisher stuff, they just don't know the audience. They just don't get it. And Brevoort responds to me is like, "Oh, I'm sorry you didn't like it. I stand by our take." I'm like, "But why? Like your take sucks, and the fans hate it. Like, so why? What are you proud of? Like, you know, what are you doing? Same thing with um, bringing back Ben Riley." Don't bring him back if all you're going to do is make him evil. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, don't bother. You've got a billion other villains. It's not like, you you know, what were you so desperate to create? What's his name? Chasm. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Were you so desperate to create Chasm? Like, the world needed Chasm so badly. I don't think so. Uh, I think no. you brought back Ben Riley, and then you were just dithering and confused and, you know, you don't know what to do and the best you could do is drive him in what i assume he's insane is he insane surely he's insane. i mean yeah pretty much because i mean they they basic i mean they brought him back to fill in for peter again and it was going good and then all of a sudden it starts going off the rails like they you know something happens where he starts losing peter's memories and stuff so you know and it's just yeah they turned him evil and it's just like why i tell you another character just to wrap this up who they have totally fucked with beast yes yeah oh, man I honestly, I, 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 I can't say how much I hate the way they've... Have they forgotten they have Dark Beast? And, I don't know. know. They, I don't know. I mean, the whole thing with yeah. Krakoa and stuff, they just like want to show everyone's dark sides, it seems like, or something. And I'm like, that's what I, I commented on your post. I'm, I'm just like, yeah. you know, they're all going to turn out to be clones because, you know, <laughs> once once the X-Men hit the MCU, they're just going yeah, to make it whatever them, that yeah. looks like. Yeah. Well, Lovable Beast. Bouncing around, bless my stars and garters. Mm-hmm. You know, the life of the party. Uh, super smart, but super cool, super fun. Everyone yeah. loved him. Uh, he was in the Avengers, in the X Men. He was everywhere. And then you had so you, but you had Dark Beast, which was his dark opposite. And Dark Beast is in the Marvel regular universe. Uh, has Dark Beast got regular Beast locked up in a closet somewhere? Maybe. maybe That's that would, I, I keep <laughs> waiting for that reveal. You know, <laughs> maybe that would explain some things, but. 
they, they just don't know what they're doing. They've run out of ideas. And when you run out of ideas, you, you start flipping people evil. You know. Just well, to, I, I don't know fun. why we have to, like, muddy up uh, the characters of some of these, like, classic characters. Because I'm like, on Krakoa, I mean, they have, like, all the, uh, you know, they have Mr. Sinister's there. Sebastian Shaw is there. The White Queen is I mean, I'm like, you can, you, yeah. we expect these people to be like that. I mean. Did you know that apparently, I, I'm not reading it, but apparently Apocalypse is on, like, their council. He was, yeah, yeah. He's like, he, he, he's, he's like going off now wherever. But yeah, I mean, Dude, that, that was the yeah. whole start of Krakoa. Like they, they're like brought all the mutants together. Yeah, all these guys. Did they, they not think that this could backfire? Magneto was on the council. I mean, but you know. in his defense, and I'm a huge Magneto fan. In his defense, Magneto does. He, look, I know he's been a villain, but he also has helped a lot. He's more on yeah, the yeah, yeah. Apocalypse. From what I know of yeah. Apocalypse. Is as evil as it gets. Mr. Sinister you know? was on the council. Mrs. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister's like, oh, I'm just going to run a clean lab this time. It's going to be ethical. It's like, sure, Mr. Sinister, we really believe you, you know, like. Mystique was on in a council, you know? Yeah. But again, I would say Mystique has at least got a history of being on the good side. Yeah. Or at least the gray yeah. side. Mr. Sinister and Apocalypse, to me, are beyond the pale, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's like, seriously, like, it's like having, it's like saying to Satan, oh, come and sit on the Council of Heaven. This will never, ever back. No, yeah, and then they know? wonder why stuff's hitting the fan, yeah. Right. So, it's just funny to me, but but I think the thing with Beast just tells me that they don't know what they're doing. You know, it's just a symptom of a disease and a lack of creativity and, and just spinning of the wheels. Oh, yeah, I mean, they had him. He had Wolverine locked up, and, yeah, he was, like, cloning, like, mindless Wolverine clones off him and stuff. And, yeah, he was, like, he was having, like, you know, uh, the, the uh, leaders of foreign governments, like, uh, like killed or, you know. All things Dark Beast would do. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I keep waiting for that reveal. It's like, okay, this makes sense now. Exactly, it would make sense, but... Again, I don't think there's much of a plan. I really don't. I think it's just um, an exercise in just churning out the content. Again, know. I, again, I, I don't know if it's just the nature of the industry now, but it's like mm. like back in the 90s, like like if you had like multiple, like when Spider-Man had four monthly books, when Superman had four monthly books, like the teams would get together like once a year and like plot yeah. out the year and be like, okay, okay, so yeah. we're going to have this event run through all our books. You know, you do this part, you do this part. I don't think you. they don't do that anymore, and I don't know if it's just the nature of, you know, people don't come into the office anymore. You just have people working all over the world, and you're, you know, you could team e- it, man. E- like, emailing like your stuff. Talking. I know, Zoom, you could, yeah, yeah. or something, like, yeah. yeah. But believe you me, if you and I were writing an X-Men book, and we easily could, yeah. um, if we, our, our conference would be quite possible to do it. I mean, I work, and I work with a lot of people who yeah. are remote. Like, not everyone's in the office, not even in my main Australian team. Yeah. They're scattered across Australia. So I mean, the, the, the ability no is there. You can do, yeah, you can conference yeah. like this. You can email people stuff. Yeah, I don't know what's... Yeah. Back in the day, say with the bad office, they would gather kind of annually. Oh, yeah. And, and plot stuff out in person. But, it, that you know, things have made it things more easier now. That, that There's no excuse. And... I think, but I think a lot of it is they just all they care about is they don't really care about the content. They certainly don't care about the art. All they care about is just churning something out and getting it in the shop on the day. And as long as they do that, that's that the content is now. It's it doesn't matter what the content is. It just matters that there is content. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I think that's a big part of their problem. And the lack of planning is just crazy and it's confusing. Like. For an X, I love the X Men. I find what they're doing at the moment, it's just bewildering to me. It's too much. And I want to read it, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to read all the crap. Yeah. Yeah. Again, like that's what Lil says. It's like, you know, all us X Men fans, it seems like we're not digging the Krakoa stuff. Why are they still doing it? Exactly. And you know, just to wrap this up, you know that when Hickman launched it, he had a whole second act. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like two or three acts. Yeah, but they just wanted to keep it going again. You know, it's still in like... Act One because they actually said, "Oh no!" We're... Apparently, it was like we're having such a great time because they didn't want to end it. Yeah, yeah, and he was like, "Well, that's fine, okay, guys, but I'm now leaving." You know, like, yeah. and it's like, why bring like love him or hate him? Hickman is a vision guy. Yeah. A big, he's a big planner guy. Like his Fantastic Four, his Avengers, just those two examples. Yeah, he has a plan. Him, yeah big plans and he does pay them off and 
uh, look, he can stretch things out too far. Like his Avengers was stretched out too far, but it did have a big yeah. plan, a big payoff, and everything. Why get him on X Men and uh, and and sort of say do all this? And he does come with a pretty radical idea, and he clearly has more of a plan. And then they go, they get cold feet. They're like, oh no, we don't want to do it. Um, it's almost like they just want all their sub teams, and it's mm-hmm. just like, oh no, you've set it up now, Krakow. Now we can just sub team it, and um, I don't know. It's lame. Again, I mean, just uh, I, the, uh, DG Chichester told us that Dead Man's Hand crossover, uh, you know, he said one day that, you know, they planned that out. One day him, Fabian Nisiza, and your boy Chuck Dixon sat down yeah. at lunch and just plotted out the whole thing. It's a great story. Tell him from me. It's an absolutely fabulous story. Yeah. It's a, I love that story. It's a great one. Um, yeah, it's weird. And, and, I, and I do think um, there's a lot of doom and gloom. A lot of these things are completely fixable. Like, you know, you can get better artists. You can get better writers. You And you can get a better sort of type, better plan. And, and and it's all quite possible. It's not impossible or anything. They just don't do it. And maybe it's because um, what they get is cheap, you know. And I, I think money. I think it's a question of money because it just seems like they're working some of these poor – some of these people are working so many books just because the, the money's not there, I think. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, this should be the golden era because it's like now with the, all the electronic stuff, I mean, you could be – creators from all over the world, you know, you could have yeah. your pick of whoever. Yeah, but they're not. You, you are right. And, yeah, it's – it's um it is an incredibly – it's sad when you look at the comic book creators who've been around for a long time, like even ones who've been around, say, for 10 years and have built up a name. I mean, from what I'm reading, a lot of them are just struggling to make ends meet. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why, you know, all the big names now, they have, like, uh, creator-owned stuff. That, you know, so yeah. it's, you know, it's because even if it's like, oh, hey, I'm not making a ton of money here either, but at least with the creator-owned stuff, I own this property so I can do whatever I want with it and don't have to answer yeah. to anybody. Yeah, so the whole thing is the whole thing is kind of ass backwards, unfortunately. Um, with that said, I'm sure there are some, there. I, I know there are some good books out there at the big two, but they are definitely in the minority. And I think as an X Men fan that we're talking about, it does feel very alienating at the moment. Yeah, me. yeah. You know, it it, it I want to like it more when I see these X Men '97 uh, Legends figures, and I know that the TV show is coming back. I'm like, sign me up. Because it's absolute gold. Um, if you can get it so right there, why can't you get it right at the publishing house? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, I feel we've covered. We've solved all the problems, Phil. We've we haven't just stayed to Scarlet Spider. We've solved. We could probably solve the Middle East crisis if we had you know, probably given a couple of hours on it. You know, we'd have to bring in Ray maybe to get his final tick of approval, drag him away from the crèche. You know. <laughs> Sounds like a plan, Jan. <laughs> Well, Let's see, what do we need that Ray? We I have him right here. <laughs> We've got him recorded. Exactly. <laughs> and shout out to Lilith, who's still sleeping one off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I love it. She's yeah. Down in Mexico, having a time of a life. God bless. Well, you don't want to know the things I've done. <laughs> Just last night. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Man, I'd I'd like to go to Mexico. I've never been. Um. I haven't been either. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd like to visit it. I think it'd be fantastic, Um, frankly. I mean, God, it'd be nice to be sitting by a poolside, sipping a pina colada, you know, something like that. (laughs) Yeah, if you like the warm weather like she does, yeah, that's a place to be. I do like warm weather. I hate cold weather. I hate cold weather. Sydney at the moment is quite chilly. We're just in the middle of winter. And, yeah, no, to be... I'd just love to be on holiday down there by poolside, just eating, getting fatter. Yeah, yeah. Getting tanned. Yeah. yeah, see, Lilith grew up in California, so she's used to the warm weather. She's like, yeah, I don't want anywhere where it's cold or snowing. Or, and I'm like, okay. Good. Uh, I, I, I could live the rest of my life. People talk about the snow. I honestly could live the rest of my life and never see snow. Oh, no, me, t- me too. Yeah, yeah, no. It's in. Also, what a hassle to drive in. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, I will say you and the, you guys in the States seem to have the worst snow and you're driving in it, and I, I I would not trust myself in a car. I'd be terrified. I mean, as long as it's not a lot of it, it's it's not too it's not bad. And you know, you just you, a lot of times you got to watch it if the if the roads are icy, if they, it starts mm-hmm. icing over, that's when you like got a the problem. black ice. The yeah, black yeah. Ice. I mean, yeah. if it's icy at all, yeah, because you know you can stop in snow. You know, you hit the brakes on the ice, you're just sliding. You know, your wheels stop and you're still sliding. Mm. 
that scares me, to be honest. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm a bit of a lead foot as well. When I'm in the oh, yeah, I'm me too. I'm in a bit of a rally, you know. Yeah. Like it's a bit of a rally situation in my head, you know, a bit of GTA going on in my head. Um, you know, <laughs> we've all been there. Although, I don't know if it's global warming, but the last couple of winters haven't been that bad, so. Yeah. Well, there's something good about global warming. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I saw some guy the other day. No, it was, you know, when I saw Mission Impossible. Have you seen the new Mission Impossible? Not the new one. I've seen all the other ones, but not the new one. It's pretty good. Like, dude, it's literally so much like the previous one. Like, in terms of quality and everything, like, it's quite good. But there's a part in it where they're like, the next war will be fought. Um, uh, decaying nations, a scarcity of resources, barely breathable air. I was like, Jesus Christ, you're really selling this. I was like, what a depressing. I was, I was, I was getting depressed in the cinema. I was like, oh god, like, <laughs> like the, over dwindling resources, uh, breathable air, barely breathable air, blah blah blah. And I was like, oh my god, like just kill me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I guess I should let you get to bed. Uh, Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I am looking forward to bed. I'm, I'm on this GI Joe uh, podcast tomorrow morning as well with my friend Aaron. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, I can't wait. I want to check out uh, when Image uh, together yeah, are going to have new GI Joe and Transformers. Content. Oh yeah, man, I can't Thompson. wait. And Larry Hammer's doing it. Yeah, as well. yeah, yeah. No, it'll be good, man. I think a lot, lot to look forward to. I think. I think I think they might have more than one yet. Like they might have some oh, yeah. Joe mini series, but yeah, I mean he's uh, the Hom is still going with that. Ori- you know the original yeah. series. I mean he's over. He's going to be over three hundred issues now on that thing. Yeah, he is. No, there's going to be. Uh, I think they announced there's at least three or four to kick off, like um, other series as well. Yeah, oh, no, there'll be plenty, plenty of content. Oh yeah, I think they Robert, said. Yeah, they think Robert they, Kirkman's imprint. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think they mentioned like a uh, Cobra Commander mini series and maybe a Duke cool. mini series. Yeah. You know who needs one? My favorite, Baroness. Oh, yeah. I, I love Baroness, man. I love Baroness, dude. She's the coolest. The coolest of the cool. Oh, nice you, oh you know who we need in the next G.I. Joe movie? We need some uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt as the Baroness. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In my imagination, that'd be nice. Put her in the black suit. You know oh, yeah, mean? yeah. Put her in that latex. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. She's got the bust for it as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. She does. No special hey, effects there, yeah? Physics? Yeah, she should do it. Yeah, someone should get... I'll tell you something funny, just hmm. to wrap this up. This, I was watching the G.I. Joe um, Marvel... Uh, no, sorry, the G.I. Joe Classified Figures panel, and there was this chick in it, and she had an ass in her jeans. It was kind of a big ass, but, like, it was like... The camera was on her, <laughs> like, because they were waiting to set it up, uh-huh. and it was just focused in on her completely. Wow. And I was just wow. sitting here... I was just sitting here almost with popcorn. <laughs> Like, we're just setting up for the G.I. Joe panel and let's just focus it on this chick's ass. Maybe they're just like, yeah, we're running late. I would need someone to keep, <laughs> something to keep them, keep the, uh, everyone's attention exactly. so they keep, don't keep leave. The, keep yeah. the punters interested. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's what it seemed like anyway. So there's my review. <laughs> <laughs> that panel was excellent. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> All right, kids. Uh, so, yes, and uh, Lilith will be back next time. Uh, we're going to be doing, like, three episodes of some early Black Hat appearances. So, uh, speaking of Busty, yes, come back for some uh, Black Hat reviews. And then Dave and hopefully Ray will be back next month. And we'll uh, do the next two issues of Scarlet Spider number three and four. So Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And I do love me some Black Cat as well. She's one of my favorites. Fantastic character. Oh, yeah. Great uh, character. All right, so yeah, so all right, kids, send us your thoughts like Ray should have. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com, or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can find all things Capes and Lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. Uh, Link to our Patreon. Please subscribe. We're in the middle of uh, Little Hellfire's drunken reviews of Heroes Reborn from the 90s, so... uh... Oh god, what a horrible era. Oh she oh she just did oh we just did uh, uh the Captain America stuff uh by Rob Liefeld and Lilith was completely uh just throwing him down just while we're terrible. doing it. Uh-huh. Yeah, well I don't blame her. It would drive anyone to drink. Oh yeah, I, I knew it was horrible. I just wanted a little hellfire to get drunk and rant, yeah. Yeah. Rob Liefeld on Captain America with that famous picture where it's like his chest is out like a million miles. Oh yeah, he's he's bigger than Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yeah, couple. He exactly is. He's it's ridiculous. It's actually ridiculous. Like it's it's like they're openly admitting he's just using so many steroids. <laughs> he's just 
pumping himself full of drugs. For, oh, for America. For uh, red, white, and blue. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so find it all at tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. That's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network. All right, if once a month is not enough for you people to get a, uh, your dose of uh, Dave Finn here, uh, mm. Dave, where can people find Signal of Doom? They can find Signal of Doom uh, on all their podcast apps. Um, we, we, we run weekly, um, and we do comic book, comic book movies, Bob Dylan, Frank Sinatra, anything I'm interested in, plenty of G.I. Joe. Um, anything, me and Rich, uh, we're currently doing Age of Apocalypse. Mm. Uh, we done, we did the first part last week and so did the show went up today and we're doing book two, uh, next week. Um, yeah. And uh, I have a couple of spin off shows, Legion Outpost, which covers okay. Legion of Superheroes, my friend Adam, and also Dread or Dead, um, which is a Judge Red one, which we do, it's semi-regular. It's, it's whenever Adam and I want to do it, but Signal of Doom is the flagship show. And it's out every week, and uh, I think we're at episode. I think the next week's three twenty. Mm. So we've done three hundred and twenty. So we've been around for a while now, but it's always a lot of fun. I, I I always have a good time. So yeah, I encourage any any listeners who've liked what I have to say here. I've tried. I try to tone it down for Phil. Try to keep it PG. Although, well, like it is PG. Like if you're a thirteen year old, you'd be checking out that chick's ass as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so it's not like your eyes are going to burn. No. Um. Yeah. So check me out. And uh, thank you for having me on, Phil, as always, man. Oh, hey, thanks. It's always a good time when you're here. Like, I, hey, the minute I have any kind of hole in the schedule, man, I'm going to be uh, reaching out to you and be like, let's do some Punisher. Well, you know, I'm ready. I'm available. <laughs> oh, I, I, I would be down. I'd be down for something regular. I'd be like, hey, let's do the Punisher in order. So, you know, let's do, you know, start at the beginning and do all the Punisher in order. Jesus Christ would be here for about the next twenty years. Oh, the oh, the nine the nineties <laughs> would take a while to get through. Yeah, Jesus Christ, <laughs> seriously, I, I I'm available, but I I reckon we'd be I'd die and we'd be halfway done. You know what I mean? Like, I know. At least we have a legacy, you know. And oh, by the way, we have a lot of guests and stuff that come on Signal. Um, Chuck Dix has been on many times with Mitch Mateus. We. We, we, we try to get a good caliber of guests. We had Dungeons and Dragons people on as yeah. well. And I'm about to have the writer of Assassin's Creed Mirage. Oh, well. nice. She's coming up soon. She's an Aussie. Oh, nice. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Again, Lope will be back next time for some Black Cat. And David will be back in a month. Hopefully, so, Ray will be back. Yeah, come on, Ray. Bitch your game. Quit, quit using that kid as an excuse. <laughs> All right, but until next time, swing on back. See you, kids. <laughs>